Uh, Rich Eisen mentions, I don't know if you're hearing what the producers are saying in my ear, but Mike Vrabel has been relieved of his duties at the Tennessee Titans. Now listen, you saw the initial reaction on Rich Eisen if you follow that show. We wanted to pop back in on, on here to give our reaction to the whole thing because not only has Vrabel been massive to the Tennessee Titans, he's one of the boys. He's been on the show. He literally, as much as you hate to admit it, is one of the guys that truly put this show on the map. Oh, with yeah. the cutting his yeah, piece yeah. off and all that. And so, God, that's true. Why did you have to bring that up? I know. It's just an opportunity for us to tip the cap to old man Vrabes because we can go about how we feel about the decision. If you, I, I've been talking, but if you want to go first. What was the reaction on Eisen? I do remember I was going over. The, was, yeah. Fired. The reaction was just taken back because uh, through the year, I think like midway through the season, you, you and I would kind of have conversations and I would bring up, like, you think Vrabes... I think he's out of here. And you would be like, there's no way. And, I, and then I would eventually just agree with you because I, I, I thought the same thing. Right. And you finish the season, you finish on a high note with Derek playing the way he did his possible last game. Tannehill getting a win in his last game, beating the Jaguars, taking them out of this AFC South. You think all the question marks of if Mike Vrabel is the guy or not the guy, this is, that has answered all the questions. And I so, know, it never felt like, because we would have those conversations. And even a couple of days ago or after, uh, the Titans ended up going, what, 6-11? and 11? Yeah. 6-11 and 11 on the year? Charles like, you think Vrabe's safe? And I was like, I, I was kind of doing the same thing. I was like, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a, nothing's going to no happen, right? Just because, like, you look at everything he's put together in his tenure with the Titans, he's crushed it. He's got, like, a coach of the year nod. He's, he's you guys went to AFC Championship. We were 11-5, and 12-5, and five, I think. The one seed in the last couple of years have been uh, up and down in this past year is kind of like definitely felt like more of a rebuild because they let go J Rob in the middle of the year last year, warranted, justified, whatever. Um, it's it felt then like if you're gonna get rid of that regime, then at the end of the last season would have been the season to do it mm -hmm. to retain him, and then you kind of go about it this year. And again, he's got a proven track record of like being like he's a championship style. Uh, coach, I mean, at, at times, of course, it's tough to play for him, but he like he understands what it takes to get it done. Like, you know, I know I've been on different teams, and uh, Vrabe always had the way he had everything structured. I know some with the Patriots, uh, some he kind of did his own thing, but he always clearly defined like how you were going to get win, what was going to happen, what the standard was, what the culture was going to be. He was never scared of any conversation. He never beat around the bush with anybody. You always knew where you stood. He's just one of those guys where, like, you understand why he's been able to fast-track to a head coach. So it just always felt like, you know, there was no chance of him of this happening. Yeah, and you brought up a good point, too, of Rabel telling the team, essentially, like, manifesting how you're going to win the game. Yeah. And it's one thing to do that. It's in a whole other position to call the shot internally, and when you watch how the game plays out, it plays out exactly like Rabel would say hey, they're going to do this. At some point in the game, this right. is going to happen, and then we're going to win because of X, Y, and Z. Right. And it was kind of like, you know, how is he just know? And it's a guy just understanding the game, understanding, you know, how to connect to players, how to critically speak with players. And, like, we know, we all talk about 2018. We all hated Raves. Oh, yeah. We thought he was the worst. He was he just came in, bull in a China shop attitude, and you're just like, yo, what the fuck is going on, man? And then through the years, it he had, adapted. like, the glimmers of, like, yo, this dude's awesome. Like, why he done? Yes, because you would have those moments where you're like, yeah. yo, maybe he's not a piece of shit. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I say yeah. that jokingly, but like, maybe he's not that guy that like, we're all, everyone's kind of making him out to be. And slowly but surely, like 19, 20, 21, like, you're like, oh, this dude's a, this dude's a cat that you kind of want to be around. You kind of want to play for. He's like a, like, he's turning into a player's coach mm -hmm. that you're like, yo, we know Raves is going to get us right. So I, I said it on Instagram. I don't know about what you said in your video, but I, I think this is a mistake. I think. I think the Titans made a big, big mistake. And I don't know if it's because we're getting older, so you understand a little bit more about what happens in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But this is the first time I've seen a fire where I feel like, okay, there, there, I feel like there's some Game of Thrones colluding in the background that took place here. Yeah, definitely a power move. I mean, somebody like... Power struggle. Yeah, at the top. It's got to... Yeah, it's like there's this weird cloud of how everything's going in the facility like we you know we can't tip off what we had even though we've been tipping off what we're gonna have on next week but it's like there. uh the difference in the building or the difference of just the vibe of the team from years past to like specifically like this year um i don't know it's like yeah ran came in and i guess ran was probably amy's hire i think is that that's like that's like public information yeah um ran was amy's hire 
But you think the vacancy of the GM job, well, like when J-Rob got fired, you would assume Vrabe goes back to the table, tries, gets whatever, could probably control the roster decisions because you kind of yeah. know where it's all at, like where all the collapses kind of happened, like with the regime of J-Rob. And then Rain comes in, and I don't necessarily know how the dynamic was. It felt like the, the dynamic wasn't always like collaborative or just didn't feel like much of anything. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just reading Twitter, it seemed like Vrabel wanted, you know, assistant GMs or guys that were like on the staff to have more clarity in what their roles and responsibilities were and giving up what that control looked like of the roster. Maybe he didn't feel like Rand was competent enough to do it or like, hey, let's hire somebody to help facilitate these these decisions, these collaborative decisions on the roster. Um, maybe Amy wanted like Rand to do it. Maybe there was like the power struggle of going back and forth of disagreement. And then maybe the options started to float up of like trading or firing or other options if Vrabe or whoever wasn't going to play ball that way. And then ultimately probably led to this of Amy's like, hey, I was just one new fresh, a new fresh perspective because, you know, I mean, you can assume how some of those conversations probably go if you're not aligned or in line with it. Yeah. This is as great as Vrabe is too. Like there were a couple of years where when it could have fallen apart and it didn't, and it's hats off to him for like cultivating the way he's always been able to cultivate the, uh, uh, the dynamic in the building. Um, but you know, there are always those, uh, those question marks too, of like hiring more in house, like not having a lack of going beyond what was in the building to bring in coordinators or assistants. Like, who knows how many of those conversations were being had about like, hey, let's change the decision up here and there and how much either Vrabe was giving or trying to be like, no, let's do this. And they probably just butt heads and Vrabe was like, no, we're not doing a trade or anything like that. Like, you have to, to fire. fire me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just don't. The thing that has kind of been brought up multiple times is the idea that Vrabel, this is all speculation. It's all allegedly. But like Vrabel thought Rand was incompetent. At, at being able to control the entire roster. Yeah. To me, I think that's a crazy, that's, it's wild to think that only like truly the people inside the building would know because, you know, there's a lot of transitions or like guys leaving, guys getting on IR, guys being brought in and brought out on a weekly basis in the NFL. But how do you understand if a guy knows who to bring in and evaluate talent until after yeah. a full off season? I just don't, I don't get it. And what I've been told in the Titans camp is the, the difference between John Robinson and Rand are like polar opposites, complete 180s. Rand and personality I'm, wise, yeah, neither one's yeah. better better than the other. But however, Rand has, at least how it's been explained to me, is much more relaxed, much more free flowing, not so players much of guy. a yeah, player's guy, not much of so much of like I'm the boss and everything. And then J Rob, as I knew when I was there, it was like one of those things where literally he was evaluating the landscapers how they were cutting the grass he had a, he had you know what kind of food was being brought in he literally every minute detail and he had his hand in everything yeah. so i don't know if that makes rave seeing it completely different side think oh maybe this guy's a little too lackluster i really don't know but i do know that the tennessee titans fan base owes a big thank you to mike rabel that dude you know we talked about 18 that was tough but the the years we all got to have whether playing or watching of being a part of something that was truly special in Nashville, Tennessee, is something that we need to look at Mike Vrabel and say thank you for. Because that's a dude that without him, that culture, the um, the work through adversity with all the injuries, like in 2021, where we literally set a record, a league record of guys being brought in and out, of guys playing in NFL games and still getting the one seed. Those type of things don't happen mm -hmm. without culture and then implementing a simple enough game plan for guys that are new enough. And that goes and falls in the back of Mike Vrabel. I have no doubt. Like, I, I, it's like I feel bad that Mike is not uh, the Titans head coach anymore, but also a piece of me is like, fuck yeah, Mike, because he's going to double dip. He gets fired. His contract is in. Now he's going to go to one of these vacant head coaching jobs, and he is going to be a cat that is highly sought after, get paid even more than he was before. And from a financial standpoint, this is going to be a massive benefit for Mike. The bad news is, I mean, both of his kids are out of, like, one's in college and one's older, but he's got to up uproot the family. He's got to move. He's got to do all that and essentially start over the process of implementing the culture he did to the Titans. Where I'm worried is, is where are the Titans headed? And it's so easy to speculate and be kind of nervous about that because there's not a head coach. We haven't gone through a draft. We have, there's so many holes in the team that there's a lot of fear. When I especially look at a guy like Jack, where it's like, there's a lot of fear. It's like, now they're going back 10 years. Now they're going back to, it's like 2014, 2015, you have an abysmal roster and no leadership. That's kind of 
the the fear it seems like throughout the fan bases of Nashville, and I we don't have an answer for that. We really don't. But what I do know is is that Mike is uh, one of the best head coaches in the NFL. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think what's surprising it too is like if you know you have one of the better coaches in the NFL, why are you not doing absolutely everything possible to make sure that that next GM hire is a like collaborative piece with kind of the vision or working with Coach Vrabel um, if you're, like, betting on Vrabel in the long run. You know what I mean? And if you're not, then I I don't understand, like, why the decision or, yeah, I don't know, man. I think you're right about uh, Game of Thrones. There's, like, there's definitely the political element. Because this has, I don't think it has nothing to do with this coaching ability. No, this has got collusion written all over it. Yeah, this is all about, like, that power struggle at the top. Like, who's going to be the shot caller and what kind of disagreement, like, not being aligned in some of the front office aspects, I, I think that that's pretty much all came down to. And then Amy ultimately has a say in it. Yeah. And I don't think, I mean, obviously the way we're speaking about it is like Vrabe must've got, got in some sort of way. I'm not saying maybe Vrabe wasn't going to get the amount of power he wanted. He goes, all right, I'm going to dip then. True. Because you, so you, you truly never know. You truly never know the truth. The people that were in that building all know pieces of the truth, but don't know the full entire story yeah. unless there's an actual sit down conversation between all of them. So it sucks, man. And you talk about, uh, yeah, the the Titans, this chapter. I think it's crazy. It's like, it was what, Vrabel from 18 to 23, 20, this 23, 24 season. Now that book is like, truly close. Truly close. Derek's gone. You were in that book. I got I to was be a little in piece book. in that book. Yeah, you got a, you you got were a like, chapter. You, like you, Derek Henry, Tannehill. I mean, a lot of guys, man. Iraq, Terrell, Terrell West, Kevin Byard, Kevin Byard, Kenny Vaccaro, Delaney in Delaney. the beginning. Like that book, that generation of Titans is officially closed. Any, I mean, he helped. I mean, busting with the boys was under was under his watch. Yeah, busting with the boys. You can't talk about that timeline of the Tennessee Titans franchise without mentioning busting with the boys. Yeah, yeah, busting with the boys is in there. Is in that little book. 